guys, welcome and happy new year, merry Christmas, happy holidays. I'm so excited for this new year. If you didn't catch the prophetic word for this year, then I will leave the link below. I will also link it up here. You can click on that little I and it will um, take you to there. So you can hear the prophetic word for this year and 2018. So I am very excited about what the Lord's gonna do. Um, prior to this year, I was feeling very down and not excited. And you know, the New Year's Eve service, something awakened inside of me and it was just, it, it makes me very excited about what God's gonna do. But one of the words that was spoken was, um, well, one of the things that the Lord gave um, my dad was that this year we're going to have to focus on our own faith and having our own faith and being able to walk in our own faith. And last year, um, I think it was at the beginning of the year last year, I actually was inspired and motivated to activate my faith and learn how to truly walk by faith. And that was something that I wanted to put myself towards. And as a family, we actually talked about, um, you know, working on our faith. And so we actually wrote down, you know, different things that we were believing God for that we were going to put our faith on. And then we shared some testimonies each month about what God was doing. Um, and so that was really exciting to just kind of see what was going on in our life and, you know, our family's lives. <laughs> And so, you know, that was just exciting. And something that I was thinking about when he talked about using our own faith, walking in our own faith, and I thought, you know, sometimes that seems hard or it seems like a complicated subject or a confusing, like, yes, you can say, well, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And you can quote the scriptures of faith, but it's like, well, but okay, so practically, what does that mean? What does it feel like? What is it? What do you do? What are the things that I do in order to walk by faith, use my own faith for my own personal victories? And so I was reading this morning in Ephesians. It is my favorite chapter. I love Ephesians. So I was reading this morning and this is something that stood out to me as something that we don't necessarily talk about. And I don't know, maybe people do, but I just, I don't feel like we talk about it enough when we talk about the concept of faith. But it's Ephesians 1 um, and it is, I mean, it's like in the paragraph. So I'm going to start with verse... Um, I guess I'll just start with 17, which is kind of in the middle of the sentence, but um, Paul is praying um, and telling Ephesians, the church of Ephesus, a prayer that he's believing over them. Um, and he said that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that your eyes of understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory in his inheritance? Okay, so that is something that I think activates our personal faith. It's going to sound corny and it's going to sound cheesy and it, it really is, but it isn't. Sometimes the cliches, the sayings of Christianity or of faith kind of cause our our eyes to be glazed over and we miss the deep revelation and understanding that goes along with that because having a personal relationship with Jesus is where your faith is strengthened because it's in our understanding and our knowledge of him and who he is that we know the hope that he's called us to so faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Well, how are we going to know what to hope for or what we can hope for if we don't understand who he is, what he's given us, what he can do, 
And so that's something that I think we miss is that it is a deeper understanding of him and who he is that we can strengthen our personal faith. Because when you go out and you're saying, okay, I'm going to use my faith. Let's make this a little bit more practical. So let's say, you know, that you are believing God for a car. And this is a testimony of, of my faith last year. Um, not my faith. Let's say that. Let's rephrase that in, in a better way. This is something that God did for me last year. Um, but I decided I need a new car. And I'm going to activate my faith on that. Something that my dad does easily is believe God for cars. And I've watched him do it my entire life. It is like testimony after testimony. I've heard the testimonies my entire life. And so I was like, okay, that's it. If my dad can do it, then I can do it. So I'm just going to use this to practice my faith. And prior to the car that I have now that the Lord gave me last year, I had hoopties. I had the kind of car that you just, you, you're like, how in the world is this still running? How is this getting me from point A to B? And it doesn't happen very easily. Um, those are the cars that I had. I did learn how to um, change my oil, how to um, check transmission fluid and coolant and change my brakes and um, start a car with a screwdriver. So I learned those things, which was wonderful, but um, also not necessary. And so, I was like, that's it. I'm tired of getting cars that run for six months and then fall apart. And the car that I had prior to this was a 99 Honda Civic and it shot out fireballs out of the exhaust and then just died. And I was like, all right, that's it. I have a new car that's reliable, gas efficient, in Jesus name, amen. So, you know, I activated my faith on that. I activated my faith on having a new car. So, let's use that as an example. So, for example, if you are like, okay, Emily, I need a new car too. So, I'm going to use my faith for a new car. Well, okay. What does God say that you can have? What does God say that you can do? So understanding that God wants the best for you because if you go out and you believe in your heart and the understanding that you have of God and who he is, is that God wants you to live off of simple means, then you're not going to have a brand new car. You're going to have simple means car. If your belief system about who God is, is that God is not for you or God doesn't want you to have the best things or this is the biggest one. If, there's so many people out there that believes this lie that God is going to put you into a situation to help you learn and help you whatever. God did not give me all of those hoopty cars to teach me how to change my oil. God did not give me any of those hoopty cars at all. God gave me my brand new RAV4 out there in the driveway that does not need an oil change, does not need to be turned on with a screwdriver. God does not put us into situations to teach us something that he has already told us we could have. You can have your healing, you can have prosperity, you can walk in the blessing, you can have wisdom, you can have all of these things because he died on the cross to give them to you. And it is in his word that you can have it. And so that's the thing is when we go out and activate our faith on certain things, we have to know what scripture says about that thing. We have to know what God says about that thing. Because if we go around speaking with words that have no knowledge, words that have no understanding, then our words become fruitless because they don't have the source of life and the source of God's word within them. So when you're, when you're going out and you're using your faith over your own situations in life, whether it's your health, your marriage, your kids, your finances, whatever it is, anything in life, God has an answer in his word. God has an answer through understanding of who he is. And if we have a wrong understanding of who God is, then we might not be saying his word. So I just, I wanted to encourage you with that today, that they, it is from a place of wisdom and understanding that we understand the hope 
of his calling, the hope that we can put our faith towards. Because faith is substance of things that are that is hoped for. So we need to seek understanding, knowledge about God, what he says, what his word says, what he thinks about a situation, and like know what we have in him so that we can effectively speak with faith. I hope that you're getting this. I hope that it's good. I don't know. If it is, then um, click the thumbs up so that I know that this is actually good um, and helping you. And if if you have questions about this, then comment below right now um, any questions that you have or any concerns or thoughts or additions to this because um, I think this is very, very, very important. This concept of faith is very important for us and especially this year if the Lord said it and the Lord is saying that we need to activate our faith and use our faith he said it back in the day <laughs> um, that we need to walk by faith but if it's specific for this time then we need to um, take that word for this season and apply it that's something that I shared with the church um, before New Year's is God's Word is eternal God's Word when he says something, he doesn't say it and then go back and say, oh, never mind, that was for that moment, but it doesn't really apply to now. If God says something, it applies all the time. So um, if God speaks a word, God speaks a word, and, and it just goes on forever and ever and ever. But I do think that there are seasons and times that God will speak something for that moment, and we need to hear it as a church and as a body. Um, we need to find out what God's saying in this moment because in that moment we need to embrace the word that he's given for the season, embrace that moment, and then be a willing vessel to speak it into the atmosphere, to apply it to whatever is going on in our life. There are things that God wants to do and there's there's seasons and times for him to do it in. So right now, this season and time for your personal life is to activate your personal faith and start manifesting God's will into your personal life. Because once that starts to happen, then if you're walking in abundance and you're able to get things by faith, then you all of a sudden become a seed bearer and not a need bearer. That was cool. Um, so that's, that's the importance of us being able, as Christians and as children and sons and daughters of God, we have to activate our own personal faith and meet our own personal needs with our faith so that we walk in abundance and can plant seeds and we can meet the needs of those around us. So I hope this encourages you. Um, this is a very important subject. Something to keep in mind is that Faith is an eternal thing. We will walk by faith in heaven. We will walk by faith for the rest of eternity. And so because of that, it should be our number one focus. It should be the one thing that we work on more than push-ups and jumping jacks and squats. We should be like, oh, the first thing that's the most important is activating my faith, strengthening my faith, strengthening my understanding and knowledge of God because that is where it comes from. The more that we know what the word says about what we can have, the more authority and power that comes out of our mouth because we're not speaking words that have no knowledge. We're speaking words with power and understanding because my God is so good. My God is so powerful and I know that because I know him and I know what his word says and I know who he is and I've experienced him. And so because of that, I can say, I have a brand new car. God has given me a brand new car. And then I can believe it because I know his word and I know what his word says and I know that it will be manifest into the physical. And now it is. Now it is manifest into the physical earth because I believed it because I knew and I understood him. I hope this is making sense to you and I, I, I hope that it's encouraging you to press in to a deeper understanding of who God is. Don't allow yourself to be limited or blinded or, or phased over 
from the cliches and the shallowness of life, dig deeper, really, truly dig into an understanding of God and what his scripture says and what, what his word is saying about what you can have and what your faith can do. So I hope this encourages you. I, I love the Lord so much and I want everyone to understand who he is and how wonderful a life with him can be. So I love you guys and I'm very excited for this new year. Um, I'm very excited to connect with you guys this year and connect with more people and for us to just grow in the Lord together. That is a hope and prayer um, that we have. So um, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe while you're at it and comment below any suggestions of videos that you would like to hear or see or things that you are dealing with that we can help you with. Um, I love you guys and I will catch you next time. Bye!